Welcome on back to the Saints Colleague Rocket League Invitational hosted at St. Clair College. Well, we have gone through one set. Yeah, one set of the quarterfinals so far. We're getting ready for the second set. And of course, we have two teams and two different tales of how they got to this point. Conestoga didn't have the most ideal pool play, but they do find themselves in the quarterfinals regardless. On the other side, you got the hometown St. Clair Saints who coming out of pools 3-0 and oh, and uh, taking down Akron in the meantime as well. So definitely two different storylines coming into this one, but we do have a Battle of Ontario. We don't have the Battle of Ontario, but we do certainly have a battle and we are excited to see Conestoga on the mainstream and on the main stage for uh, what I believe is uh, the first time in this sort of setting for them. So we're excited to see what they can bring. It's going to take a little bit of upset potential to take down the Juggernauts of St. Clair right now as they are playing some good Rocket League themselves. Well, uh, that's it for me for the stage for now, so I'll throw it back to the caster desk to break it down. Yes, it will be our second quarter final this evening. The St. Clair Saints versus Conestoga College. Conestoga having a rough time at it in the round robin, but then again, they were also in a tremendously difficult group. They had Northwood, Durham, and Davenport University, and with St. Clair on the other hand, they were able to sweep their group. So, as the first seed coming out of that group, St. Clair get to face off against the weakest team, and it just happens that Conestoga get to be the weakest. Right, I mean, weak, uh, weakest in this scenario, sure, but, I mean, looking back at some of their series, you know, Conestoga, like we said, just kind of got put in a group of death, but they actually didn't do as bad as you would think obviously they had a little a couple of uh, closer um games to a lot of these teams and they also took a game off of northwood which was kind of probably their highlight one that yes. we weren't expecting uh to see for sure yeah it's it's it takes a lot to take a single game off of the northwood let alone a series and if anything it shows some decent potential sure maybe northwood are playing off whatever but we'll get to see if it is true as conestoga will take on st Clair college in this best of five quarterfinal right and as we get started demos going back and forth christian able to find one on two i believe it was Egg, uh, 80? Yeah, 80. And now Spoods just trying to track back Besh with the touch up high, but it is going to be probably a missed touch. Almost setting up for the Conestoga goal, but some early offense coming out from Conestoga. That St. Clair's goal line defense has been immaculate so far this tournament. All, honestly, off the back of Spoods and just his high IQ in terms of defense. Now we'll see if they'll be able to put Conestoga away. Again, best of five. This should be one that Sinclair can handle, but again, you mentioned the upset potential, and it is very possible if Conestoga get rolling. Right, I mean, a bunch of teams, you know, early on, you know, you see Conestoga, you count them out because it's a name you don't, aren't really familiar with, but these guys will make you pay if you underestimate them. They will take a game off of you if you're not careful, and obviously, in a best of five, that could mean all of the difference if you don't really lock in after a decent demo from 80 onto Spoods there. And St. Clair just got to be careful with getting demoed. That kind of seems to uh -oh. be their weak spot. A little bit of a messy defense set up there by Conestoga. They clear it out for now, shot comes back in, but it's going to be the chunk to get the save. It looks like St. Clair might have another chance. Besh almost soloing it, getting it over one defender. Christian looking off the corner, Reed will be saved. Vesh will have to go back for the clear. Spoods will try his own turn. Looking for the solo, get the pinch off the ceiling. No teammate will be there. So St. Clair will look to extend the pressure. Christian almost getting it over another. And St. Clair will continue this time and time again until one eventually goes in. Right, I mean, St. Clair just have to be careful of uh, moments like that. Obviously, a couple of scary balls coming through the back half, leaving it all alone for Spoots on the defense. When I was casting these guys in November on the Canadian Championships with Leafex, we noticed something in particular, and that's that St. Clair usually likes to keep uh, Christian and Vesh up top, and sometimes it leads to these 2v1 fast breaks that Spoots has to handle by himself. No, don't get me wrong, Spoots is an incredible defensive player, but leaving him in, in those sort of scenarios, he's not going to be able to save 100% of them so it is going to be key to see how St. Clair react and maybe if they change up the defensive oh. play but so far today oh. it has been working drop down pass almost for Vesh but he can't quite read the double and now Christian trying to run offense yeah almost getting the double angle for Vesh but he's not done the pass down will be saved it's the Condors 
stay alive just for a bit longer. Half a game gone by, they've been able to make it work against St. Clair, playing very passive right now in the defensive end, but that can only last for so long. Christian looks to extend. 80 will collect, looking for the clear pass over to Rashili, but not going to get anything through. St. Clair will rush to take it out of their zone. Right, and Chuck, you need to try to find a decent touch there, but Christian's going to be able to ply that one out. Vesh now has Spoods on the wall, leaves it for him, gets called off. It's going to be Vesh's number again. Preflip just to get back to that ball, finds the demo. Is there anyone in the center that can make this work? No, not quite the ball. Not going quite where it needed to be in order to be a threatening offense. Should be cleared out just fine by Conestoga. But as I say that, Spoods cuts rotation, gets the flick up for the pass. It's going to be 80 with the clear out, but St. Clair keeping up the pressure. Vesh off the ceiling, won't go. 80. Rushing ahead, trying to steal some boost and maybe be a bit annoying for St. Clair in the clear. Didn't get much chunk, will put it off the backboard. No one will get the clear in turn. This looks like it'll be an easy transition for Vesh. St. Clair take the first goal here. Right, and they find themselves in that two-on-one fast break. They just know that they need to just try to play it fast. They know the defender has zero boost in rush. And uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. So 1-0 St. Clair with a minute 12 left. They open up the scoring. Conestoga needs to try to find an answer. Yeah, but now they need to get an insurance goal. Conestoga are even more determined now than ever. Try and equalize. A good demo from Rushley. That's a decent attempt as well from the chunk to make it a bit awkward for St. Clair, making it as difficult as possible to get the clear. 50 seconds remaining. Possession will go back. Vesh will send it back as well. You can already see St. Clair making some adjustments, uh, adjustments, sending that first man deep, try and prevent Conestoga from getting any resources to go in transition. And you know what's interesting? We see on right now that St. Clair, I was talking about them switching up their defensive tactics. This tournament, I will say, they have. So they are now kind of keeping everyone uh, back a little bit, but it makes them susceptible to kind of like aggressive bump plays and demo plays. So St. Clair just has to try to stay safe on their back line. They've done a great job of it so far this tournament. With 15 seconds left, they just have to burn time, try to beat over one defender. It's probably going to drain about five seconds off the clock. So each time that happens, it's going to be crucial to see how Conestoga answers back. Boost numbers are high for Conestoga, so they will obviously need, they have a decent chance of keeping it up, but the ground should come in from Smooths at will. St. Clair take a pretty chill game, but tense at the same time up 1-0 on the series. Yeah, I mean, only a single goal that they were able to net. However, it was one that earned them the win. And Conestoga playing it close, which is the main benefit. Though I think for St. Clair, I think they could use a bit more brevity when it comes to the scoreline, get themselves a bit more for insurance. Now, going into this one, I'm really hoping that on the defensive end of things, they can lock things down. I think Conestoga, they're inching closer and closer. They're getting these awkward touches, which are making it a bit weird for St. Clair to just keep going in their defensive scheme. But I like how St. Clair, they're practicing a bit more with the back pass. They're doing everything they can to just try and be a bit more creative on offense because later in the bracket, assuming they get the win here, they're going to have to take that creativity or creativity against other teams. Right, and I mean, you brought it up best. St. Clair, they just look comfortable on their back line. Conestoga was making it awkward for a little bit, but I mean, it's something that they couldn't handle, obviously, as the scoreline came through. But right now, I mean, I, I see Conestoga. I like what I'm seeing a little bit on the offensive side. I think they're mixing it up. It's good. But on the defensive side, you know, they aren't really taking too much control. Yes, they only did allow one St. Clair goal, but it felt like when St. Clair was in the offensive half, while they didn't have many attempts, those attempts that did come through were very threatening. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of it came down to, even though I think the, the main thing with Conestoga is they were willing to make a lot of these plays with like little boost at all. I think St. Clair are doing a good job of just not only keeping Conestoga in their own half and generally having good pressure, but doing so with like little boost in the tank for Conestoga. Despite that, Conestoga continue to just charge at them like a headless horseman and just continuously trying over and over and over again, no matter how little resources they have. It's going to be Spoods with the centering play, trying to run backline interference. It will be Christian that ends up helping him out, though, with the demo. 
one touch over the defender. But now St. Clair in a little bit of a weird position. Christian has to try to track back. The defense a little bit sloppy. The shot should come through from 80, and it is going to just be saved oh. out. But shot after shot will happen. I did note that after Vesh did get beat on that clear, it seemed like that was the last man. It forced Christian to kind of neglect grabbing that 100 boost in the corner, and he had to cut rotation in order to just try to keep the ball out of the net. So when you get that sloppy defense, it is going to happen eventually if shot after shot does come through. I like that from Conestoga. I think they're keeping the pressure up high, and you need to do more of that. Honestly, a lot of it comes down to St. Clair. They just made a mistake. The boost was a bit of a struggle, and they just sent it the wrong way. So Conestoga will be firmly back into this. 1-0, making it somewhat of a game. Now St. Clair will look to equalize. It's going to be rush on the clear right now. Vesh, though, cuts in, drop down pass. It's going to be left for Christian. Save comes out from 80. Spoods trying to whip that ball back into the corner. Gets beat from the ceiling though. 80 with a touch controls. Tries to play the 50. Gets it. 50 is another one, but it's not going to stay on the ground there. Would have most likely been the best touch for him to get. And now is that a miss off the ceiling from Chunk? I believe it was. The pass comes through the corner. St. Clair getting into the end of Conestoga yet again. Still Vesh in the wing. Spoods might be going for his own shot. It's going to make it a little bit awkward. No boost. Christian playing super advanced. Almost over aggressing or aggress aggressing a little bit. Conestoga will try again and is actually having good initiative. Christian looking to alleviate some of that pressure with a defensive demo. Vesh for a good 50 as well. 100 tank before him. Still, the possession just goes back to Conestoga. Maybe actually Spoon's gonna send it downwards. Vesh not able to get the flick over the one. Right, and I mean, Conestoga, low boost, but they're just playing their 50 so well. The puck oh, does come oh, in, oh. though. I want to see that again. It was Christian who sent it through, but the bump did come through on the last defender. I believe it was Vesh running the interference. Yeah. Yes, able to get that rid of that defender on Conestoga. Beautiful play there from Vesh and the guys on St. Clair. Yep, so well timed, too. Really, at the last second, the aerial uh, bump came through. It's not very often you get to see just well-timed aerial bumps like that. That typically comes with higher level of play, but when it's labbed, when it's drilled, it can really work out in your favor. St. Clair, that'll be a punish. Yeah. Spoods will earn the lead here for St. Clair College off an unfortunate error from Conestoga. Right, I mean, both me and you knew exactly what was going to happen the second we saw that touch. It just unfortunate. No one back inside of Conestoga that could react to it on time. Just a mistake that you can't afford to make. Yeah, no, it's especially at this level where a team like St. Clair will be so quick to punish you for any mistake you make. Remember, you're going against the one seed. Yes, you might have a tie scoreline, but it does not mean squat. If you are able to, or if you're not able to keep it or make mistakes like this in rotation, Christian makes it a 3-1 scoreline. They catch the third man in rush, just sneaking up a little too far. He doesn't get a power touch on the ball to clear back. And that's going to be all she wrote for that engagement there. St. Clair doing a really good job of just playing calm. They find themselves up two with two minutes left. So comfortable. A much easier game for St. Clair to manage than game one. At this point, it's on St. Clair. The second Double. touch from Spoods. The give and go for our man Spoods. St. Clair College make it 4-1. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful. Christian with the layoff. It can't get much better than that. Just a beautiful play from Spoods and the gang. Up 4-1 right now. Conestoga, if you want to come back, you quite literally need a goal in probably the next 20 seconds or so to even etch your name into making this a game. Because right now, St. Oh, Clair oh. are running wild. The ground pinch into the, into the uh, shot there, Spoods with the control now, flip reset. Alexi used it trying to beat 80, but 80, the better man to it. Now, the, the read off the sidewall, but it is going to be found out by Vesh. Has a little more boost, looking for a pinch to the center. Not going to find anything now from Christian. He is going to track back, picks up that corner, has time right now, can afford to kind of play slow. Let St. Clair replenish the boost numbers. A beautiful fake as well, as it just wastes more and more time. Let Spoods and Vesh grab an 100 pad that they can try to work this ball out of their own defensive end with. At this point, St. Clair can just sit and look pretty. They're sitting on the 4-1 score line, waiting for that inevitable game three to approach and put things into a potential sweep motion. 
Conestoga, they're playing a decent game, and they were playing a fantastic early game, but the moment that Sinclair was able to break things open with just quick, coordinated passing, Conestoga just didn't know what to deal with. You know, it's funny because on paper, Conestoga, they're known as more of a team that kind of likes to have mid control and they like passing the ball around. They love doing team plays. But right now, if you kind of took a look at what they like doing and applied it to St. Clair, you could flip the names right now because St. Clair has been the one with the mid control the entire time. They have been doing the passing plays this entire series so far. I know we're only in the game two, but it's really starting to show now just kind of who is able to keep that mid control and what that can do for you as a team. So Conestoga, you know, with a lot to look at and a lot to figure out, and they don't have a lot of time to do it. Yeah, I think one thing, okay, let's be one to go. No, maybe not. Last second winding down, St. Clair College will be on series point to advance to the semifinals. Yeah, and I mean, as they should, that was a beautiful game played there by St. Clair. Uh, I just, you know, highlight plays coming out from highlight players. That's all I got to say, right? And uh, they're doing a great job of controlling the midfield and making sure that, you know, game one, it was kind of looking like Conestoga was catching them, lacking a little bit in their back, uh, on the back end. But St. Clair has definitely ironed out those issues, at least in this game that we was just played. Uh, you know, it was just kind of a trouncing and yeah. Conestoga just never really got into it. All right, so... With a series point on the line, St. Clair will look to wrap things up early. Besh, get the flip reset. Shot will be saved by Conestoga. Pinch going through mid from Christian. Can he try to finish this play? No, should be just able to get taken out. Tries to run a little bit of backline interference, but now he's got to come all the way back because there Ooh, is an offense going through Spoods, like you said, awkward play, but he makes it work. And now Vesh with the pass up to him. So probably just going to try to play off the sidewall, try to get a pass downfield, but the ball is moving a little too slow. That should be an easy clear. And so far, we're just kind of playing a little bit of volleyball going back and forth to open things up. Yeah, and at this point, it's a fight for that mid control like you mentioned before. You can see that in St. Clair. They, they really are aggressive in grabbing that midfield boost and then trying to challenge the ball as much as possible. Christian getting the angle here from the corner. It's unchallenged. And with it, securing St. Clair's first lead in this game. Yeah, I mean, that's just a beautiful shot. Christian pulls out the protractor for that one, and he's going to be able to slot that to the left. Conestoga defender just completely lost on that goal line. It's going to be the kickoff to go the way of St. Clair, but a little bit of an awkward press there. Vesh able to get the whiff or whiffing on the ball, but Christian able to finish. Oh my God, if that goes in, it was just an inverted flick. It almost looked like it was going to be a breezy at the start, but then Christian flips the car upside down and flip cancels the other way. Beautiful play there, but it didn't go into fruition. Christian now with the clear. St. Clair trying to keep things 1-0 so far. Now Christian, with a Vesh. Demo coming through. Christian speeding to the ball, attempting to try and get there before the defensive rotation reemerges for Conestoga. The clear. Still, Christian, and at this point, St. Clair doing everything they can to just straight up beat him to the ball. That is the name of the game for St. Clair. Utilize your speed, your ability, your skill to just outrank Conestoga. Right, I mean, so far, I think the difference maker has been, like, obviously, you know, we've been talking about how St. Clair have had the mid control for the most part, but so many time and time again, especially in that second game, we're able to see St. Clair just beat out the defensive rotation as well on Conestoga. They're able to just kind of find the openings, the gaps in the oh, defense. Whoa. The sidewall read from Vesh, but just barely oh. saved out by Rush. And wow, that would have been probably one of the goals of the tournament if that did go in. Yes, sure. sir. An absolutely beautiful mechanical play from Vesh, but it doesn't go through. And so far, the game stays 1-0. Half a game remaining, Spoods looking for the easy clear. Chunk needs to get a good touch on it, and he does. Okay, this could be something, and I liked the aerial passing play. Very RLCS-esque if you're able to make it work at this level. However, against a team like Sinclair, who have literally played RLCS teams, you need to be able to do this. This is going to be an easy yep. clear, and that is what happens when you overcommit on offense. And it happened again. It happened again. It happened once in game two. It's what got the Saints their insurance goal the first time, and now it's going to be what gets the Saints the insurance goal the second time. So 
it's just two times now we've seen Conestoga down by one goal. They kind of get too aggressive. They kind of overcommit. It's going to be St. Clair to uh, the well. rotation again. But that All was right. definitely a mistake. That, uh, it's an, a quick answer for Conestoga. Yep, that opens things up anyway. That takes away the insurance goal from St. Clair as a kickoff goal will make its way through. Now with Conestoga, they have gotten and earned good goals against St. Clair before. Hopefully this will be a bit of a motivation change for them. Let's think of their first goal in this game. Haiti going to do it solo. Gets a good 50 on Christian. It'll be kept in the blue half. This could be weird if no one is there to challenge. Russell though, that touch just gives possession straight back to St. Clair. St. Clair right now, they have to try to hold here. Conestoga trying to mount something up. The flip reset, but I don't believe the flip, the reset actually happened. So a little bit of just false alarm there for Conestoga. The challenge comes through from the chunk, but he needs to try to find another play with this flip. Getting it over one defender, I believe it was Vash. And now Spoods coming in with the help defense. Ball in the corner, not a lot of boost on the side of Christian. Has to alleviate it off the ceiling. It should be a shot through from Conestoga, but it will be Spoods on the defensive line to save it out. Last remaining 90 seconds of of this game. Conestoga, they're finally in the offense, putting in some work into it. Try and outplay St. Clair. Bavesh is able to cut off that passing attempt. We'll see what he can do solo. He's gonna get the flick over one, but it will be just barely touched on to prevent another chance. And Spoots looks to make it a bit awkward for Conestoga with the last minute left. St. Clair want that insurance goal. Christian clangs it, scores! Will be able to secure the 3-1 lead. Right, I mean, just upper 90, able to beat out the defender, not getting quite the height there from, I believe it was 80 who was challenging first. So it is the insurance goal back now for St. Clair, up by two with under a minute left. Conestoga, you have to mount up something quick. The sidewall passed down, but no one to find. It is going offline. Christian, four boosts in the tank, has to try to force a 50 for a drop down. Not going to happen. Conestoga running interference on the other side. Besh with a little bit of an awkward touch, but it seems to get the backboard read out. Sidewall passed down, and Spoots is going to be able to beat the That's man. It is going to be the overcommit, and it makes sense for Conestoga. When you're down by two with this little time remaining, you really do have to start throwing all of your eggs in one basket, just trying to see how you can score. But it is going to be St. Clair to make you pay, and they beat the defensive rotation back again by yeah. overcommit. I mean, a lot of this came down to just like one cut gone wrong, which is really just shows how Rocket League is just a game of inches, is that literally only all that it took was just one cut in rotation to try and block the transition, and it all fell apart. Christian getting the second touch, almost making it crazy. The last few seconds winding down, St. Clair College have played a phenomenal game and will continue to do so as they will move on to the semifinals here for this Rocket League Invitational, and they will play on more and more against higher caliber teams. St. Clair win in three. Ryan, I mean, they deserve it. That was a dominating series other than the first game, right? I mean, it was just kind of seemed like some St. Clair jitters on the defensive end. They just had to sort of figure it out. And when they could, they started opening up Conestoga on the offensive side. So it was a very good series played by St. Clair. They're Shout smiling. out to Conestoga, obviously, good for sports. competing. Good sports. You know, these two Canadian teams showing off here. It's just beautiful to see. Get to showcase some Canadian Rocket League at a high level. And of course, we're all comrades here. We're all wearing that Canadian flag except Vesh, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No, we're all wearing red and white. How about that? There you go. All right, there we go. Now, with one, uh, with this one, I believe we'll be having some replays ready to go. But St. Clair, this is such a good run from them so far. I mean, I think depending on how the bracket ends up being, if I had it in front of me right now, their next prospective opponent... Akron and GVSU? Yes, I believe so. That is going to be... They're matched up to be facing Durham or Akron. 
uh, as they will be, of course, Akron lost. They went one and two. So they will be facing off against each other. That is currently actually being played on the colleague stream. Shout out Danger Taco and Pyro J, my good homies. They are matching up, and it looks like they uh, Akron currently have a 2-1 game lead on Durham. Really unfortunate for Durham, but we can take a look at some replays, I believe, if we have them. Akron... Uh, will be looking to face off against St. Clair or Durham. I think both of them are going to have a really hard time because this St. Clair team is firing on all cylinders here. Right. I mean, you got to remember, Akron did face off against St. Clair. It was the first series of the day, I believe. And I mean, St. Clair was able to take it 3-1. So as we go through these highlights, it's just really interesting to see how St. Clair, to me, have been seemingly getting better and better just as the day goes on. They're very consistent right now. And, I mean, these replays are just proving it. Well, I mean, this is a team that, you know, was built uh, relatively recently. So they were got, you know, they got put together. And then I believe this is their first time playing on land. So Spoods obviously has that land experience and is bringing it with him. Christian has been on the varsity team for a good while now. Played in CRL in the most stacked uh, CRL conference that there was at the time in the Eastern Conference last fall. And uh, of course, with Vesh coming in, really earning his spot from the Academy roster, putting in the work, import player from Poland, a fantastic player in his own right. And I think we're starting to see why these teams are merging together. You get the defensive masterclass from Spoods, you get Christian's pop-off potential, and you get Vesh's consistency, which has been so good for St. Clair. Right, and I mean, you know, it was just beautiful from St. Clair to see how they've changed up a lot on defense. You know, we were talking about how, you know, Spoods is the defensive mastermind. That is true. But I really like seeing now how St. Clair are bringing in Christian and uh, Vesh more often to give that help defense, to alleviate some of that stress off of Spoods in the back line. And then it transitions over to being able to see, you know, Spoods help out in passing plays like we're seeing right there. Or the backboard play, for example, that we saw a little earlier. It's letting him kind of get further into the offense. And it's just, you know, it really does help because it really feels like he's no longer trapped in that backside anymore. And if you can just let Spoods kind of run wild and run free, it's going to be a long day for anyone who you face up against. Yes. Also, St. Clair's coach, I, I need to give a shout out. Uh, fantastic at his job. I've been watching him. Um, and Scholar, the, yeah. Scholar, excuse me. Uh, the, the, the amount of just insight he's able to bring in between every single match. Not even just like you can tell he's the most hype in the server. He's really trying to like make it not just an analytical game, but also a mental game and keeping your players really invested into it. Um, but he's also just been able to support on every end of the pitch. And I, I want to also credit uh, him with this win as well. So we are just about ready to keep going with our bracket. But, but first, we have an interview on stage with your St. Clair Saints. So please take it away. Thank you very much, guys. I am now joined by Coach Scholar, um, coach, in-game coach of the St. Clair Saints. Um, as you guys just saw, St. Clair taking down fellow Ontario wins 3-0. Uh, um, on the way uh, to a top four, a guaranteed finish. So already in the money. Um, Conestoga came out of pools 0-3. Um, what was the message to the guys going into that match? So when we started today against GVSU, we started a little weak in our first game, not really picking our own pace and getting back into that groove until games two or three. And so basically against... Um, Conestoga, I think, was, was the, the school name. It was a lot of the same thing where it's like against these teams that aren't uh, bringing RLCS caliber players at the moment, we want to make sure we pick the pace that we want to play against, while when we play against teams like Akron or, or you know, Northwood in a sense, we try to match their pace and keep up with them, but we don't want to match the pace of like some of these uh, teams that don't have the same experience, but instead we want to pick our pace, play the routine that we want to play, and go through that. So honestly, the whole goal is to more or less just say, you know, identify ourselves as a team, what we want to do in the moment, and then play it to our best execution possible, knowing that we can outpace or play, play Play the base that we want to play today. Okay. Um, well, speaking of Akron, it'll either be Akron or uh, Durham College that will be your next opponent for the semifinal match. You guys have top four guarantee, but a tough match ahead of you. Um, what do you, what message are you sending to the guys going into that? And is there a preference of a team that you would rather play? 
I would say in this case, there's no real preference. I think uh, Durham shows a lot of midfield potential, much like Akron does right now. If Akron had Tristan with them today, I think that they would be bringing on a lot more definite pressure on our net, it, on defense specifically. But um, considering how we played against them in the groups, I think both will ba basically pull a similar overall performance against us, but it's going to be about covering midfield pressure against Jordan or midfield pressure against Bullseye. Both of them basically cause the most mix-ups in the moment, and in the same idea, the better we can end up match that or overall outpace that midfield pressure or match it matches we can get a better breakaway will allow us the best opportunities to take the lead on it or um, in the same idea continue our performance we've had today so far. Okay one more question for you um, we're getting into the best of sevens now does that change anything have you guys had success or lack of success in the best of seven series in the past and you know the deeper you get into a series how how do these guys keep their mental in check? Uh, to a good degree, I don't think we've had too many best seven experiences so far uh, this season or while I've been here. Um, but the entirety of our rotation, how we've been building the strategy throughout the season or since I got here was about consistency for, uh, you know, getting back onto the basics. So that way if we are playing bad or if we're getting tired, we could just, you know, revert to a simple strategy which that allows us to stay consistent within our means. And in the same idea, continue to allow ourselves to play to our best abilities throughout the entirety of the series. Um, I feel like a lot of teams don't really handle that. So going into it, it's just going to be about reverting back to how we practice in scrims and staying as consistent as possible. And in the same idea, more or less allowing us to... Um, more or less outwithstand a lot of these other teams that might be playing for more peak potential or have talented players that might burn out in the first five games, in a sense, if we have to go to game seven. Perhaps endurance is the key in order to win these crucial semifinals matchup. Of course, a single elimination bracket, so no room for error for either side of St. Clair uh, and their next opponent. Scholar, thank you. Uh, GG's, and uh, good luck in the next one. Thank you. So that'll do it now for St. Clair and Conestoga. St. Clair taking the series 3-0 fashion. Don't go anywhere. Semifinals, we got a banger coming up next. It's going to be Northwood taking on fellow Michigan school, Oakland as well. So we'll be right back just after this.